present today's program in French and English with subtitles in Chinese, English, Korean, Arabic, Persian, all axes or Vietnamese, Russian, Bulgarian, Hindi, Japanese, Indonesian, Thai, Croatian, Portuguese, Hungarian, Italian, Spanish, French and German. Connu pour sa déclaration des droits de l'homme et du citoyen, la France est un pays qui met en avant les principes de liberté, d'égalité et de fraternité. Le peuple français a bon cœur et est bien connu pour accueillir les immigrants venus chercher un foyer. La nation française a eu une influence positive sur de nombreux pays à travers sa législation et son excellence dans de nombreux domaines. Par exemple, dans le domaine de l'exploration, les Français ont été à l'avant-garde de l'aérospatial avec les frères montgolfiers et leurs montgolfières qui a permis à l'homme de s'élever dans les airs. Aujourd'hui, les Français sont toujours à la pointe de la technologie, en particulier dans l'aérospatial et les transports terrestres, avec entre autres le train à grande vitesse ou TGV, détenteur du record de vitesse. Nous devons aussi le cinéma à Léon Bouly et la photo couleur aux Frères Lumière. Toutes ces innovations ont permis à beaucoup de Français de traverser les frontières et d'apporter leur esprit de solidarité dans le monde entier via des organisations célèbres comme Médecins Sans Frontières et Emmaüs International. La France est aussi bien connue en médecine avec entre autres les découvertes de Louis Pasteur sur les vaccins. Dans le monde des arts, c'est Claude Monet qui a révolutionné la peinture avec l'impressionnisme. On ne peut bien sûr pas parler de la France sans mentionner la haute couture, la gastronomie et le savoir-vivre qui ont fait de ce pays une destination touristique romantique. La France est aussi une terre de paysages variés qui s'étendent depuis la côte atlantique jusqu'à la Méditerranée, en passant par le Jura et les Alpes dont le plus haut sommet, le Mont Blanc, avec ses 4808 mètres, est aussi le toit de l'Europe. Au cours de sa tournée mondiale de conférence en 1993, le maître suprême Ching Hai a gracieusement accepté de se rendre dans cet ancien pays de romance et d'histoire colorée pour partager sa sagesse et sa connaissance de la vérité. En août 2007, le maître suprême Ching Hai est revenu en France pour un séminaire avec les membres de notre association. Nous vous invitons à présent à suivre la discussion suivante entre le maître suprême Ching Hai et les membres de notre association intitulée « Le sacrifice des maîtres qui descendent dans ce monde ». C'était à Paris, en France. that we talk about. Mahaudin is a master in a vision. Somehow he went back in time, you know. You know, sometimes you went in the meditation, you see the past, yeah? The past master, remember I told you that in meditation maybe you could see Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad, whoever, maybe your religious uh, a faith uh, leader, or some other that you don't even know, or Lao Tzu, yeah, uh, Sikh Guru, yeah, number of Turkey, yeah, and some of you have seen them, yeah, okay. Well, it's a lucky event if you can see the past masters, but it's it's okay if you don't see. So this master Bahaudin, he. He has in in his vision. He saw some of the past master. Yeah, probably they can visit him. Yeah, <laughs> just like uh, they can visit uh, me or you sometimes. Yeah. Okay. So he saw them. Those already deceased, actually. Yeah, the past master. So um, when he come back to his uh, real life, you know, in the earthly life again, after he, he saw his visiting group, 
the, the visiting followers or disciples, he said, oh, I have seen uh, and had a companionship with the master of the most ancient times, thought to be long dead. Yeah. So they were so excited, all excited, you know, probably these one haven't seen any of those in vision before. So I said, oh, please tell us how they look like. Yeah. So the master said, how they are, you know, also how they are. So the master said to the visiting group, the way your attitude is towards the teaching that those uh, ancient master would have thought you are demons. Oh, that's very <coughs> strong. <laughs> but it's probably like that. Some, some of the, the disciples. <laughs> might have been like that. I don't envy a position of the Master. It's good to have all this knowledge and wisdom, but oh, when you have to use it to share it with other people, sometimes it's a really agonizing. Remember what we learned from the other Master? Not all disciples or followers come for the same reason. Yeah? Many of them come for material gains or physical benefit, yeah, understand? Or the rich and fame of this world, or anything at all, or just to train you with uh, attention to them, you know. Some even wish uh, the masters who scold them. <laughs> they love all kinds of things, yeah, and it's very tiring. For any master in that, in that level of consciousness, of spiritual hate have to come down and accompany this kind of mentality. Yeah? Okay, now, so that explains why the Master say like that, okay? He, he doesn't mean to be bad or anything. He's just telling the truth. Because once you ascend to a higher level of consciousness, you see things, my God, you will not know how the people on this planet continue to live their life, you know, and with each other. It's a very strange thing to watch <laughs> from a spiritual higher realm, to watch a human behavior and the way how they react to the true teaching of the Master. You know, they feel extremely to say very surprised, aghast, yeah. yeah. Uh, in the Buddha's time, the Buddha also mentioned in some of the sutra that uh, the uh, even just the how you say the divas, you know, the god of a lower level from heaven, look down to see human being, the way they eat, the way they act, the way they do things. <laughs> they also shake their head, you know. They cannot understand. How human live the way they live. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now he talk about the disciples. You know the uh, the followers. And in a case that you have seen them, had you seen them, you know the ancient masters, you would have considered them quite unsuitable for your company. <laughs> I mean, they are not fit enough to be your friend. <laughs> Understand? Yeah. And then you would not be asking questions about them at all. Why? That supposed to be these, uh, the followers of this master have seen these ancient masters. They wouldn't want to even be in their company or ask anything about them. Why is that? They wouldn't be interested. Uh huh. Right, good, good enough. Ah, expectations are different. Yeah, cool, cool. We're getting something. Yeah, what else? Huh? Low level? The the followers. Okay. Who else? Yeah, there are many reasons. They're not attracted. Yes. That's correct too. The outlook of the master? Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe cannot relate? Different culture as well? Yeah, that could be it too. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah, it could be it. It could be it, but I don't think that is a reason here. Yeah, because they say that they consider them unsuitable to be in their company. It's something like disdainful, you know, looking down upon those ancient masters. So it must have been those uh, reasons listed above, you know, like the appearance is different, the expectation is different. Yeah, anything else? Because the master don't always look the way you want, you know? <laughs> they always paint, uh, you know, one or two saints, the picture with the halo around it, and sit there serenely, you know? But uh, some master could be, you know, like handicapped even. There was uh, one story in uh, Confucius time. There was one guy who, who, who is kind of handicapped, you know? When he walk around, he hope, you know, he cannot walk because his one of his legs has been uh, deformed or something. But all the women flock to him, want to be his second wife rather than to be at home and be the first wife. And all the men uh, flock to him and want to be his buddies. <laughs> you see what I mean? Yeah. So somebody say to Confucius, why is that? So Confucius say, oh, that man, he's enlightened. And that's why. Okay? And uh, some master, they don't shave, you know? Some master, they don't comb their hair, they grow their hair very long. Yeah? And some master, they didn't even bother to cover their body. Yeah? Uh, they just wear their birthday suit every day. <laughs> Uh, uh, well, <laughs> some people still do that in India, even women. Yeah, they call them Naga. Okay, Naga sadhus, yeah. Anyway, you know, they, they do that. They live in the Himalaya, they train themselves in the art of tumor heat, which is a solar plexus. They activate the solar plexus system from the uh, stomach here, yeah and then they hit their body with it, so they don't have to wear anything. Um, sometimes, for the sake of decency, <laughs> for the disciples, <laughs> they put some ash on their body <laughs> to cover, you know. <laughs> I don't know how much they cover with that, <laughs> but <laughs> there's some cover. You cannot say they're not covered, right? <laughs> okay. And people still flock to see those, you know. Yes, because the Indian people, they have no discrimination. You can wear beautiful clothes, bedeck yourself with jewelry, diamonds. They, if you are enlightened, they know it. Yeah. But some so naive, even if you say you are enlightened, they would believe you anyway, <laughs> because they're so pure. Yeah? They're just so pure. I told you that's why. They, they just have this uh, NQ in them, you know? <laughs> they believe all people are good. Yeah, in some of the African countries, they have that tradition too. It just may be lost with the modern civilization or influence from other countries, but actually the real African tradition is that anyone come to your house, they'll be treated like God, just like the Indian people. Yeah, so that is in India, but I don't advise you to try it here in France, please. <laughs> Il faut pas faire ça en France, hein? Surtout pas à Paris. <laughs> Never try it in French, and especially in Paris. Please, don't say the master say that. It's okay if you enlighten to wear or not to wear. Doesn't matter. Please don't blame me if the police arrest you and throw a blanket on you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Actually, it's a natural state of of life, but we're so used to with wearing clothes, yeah, or we're so used to with the monk who wear very scanty clothes or, or different color or different fashion, so that when we see somebody else who supposed to be an enlightened person, you know, who doesn't wear clothes or who wear a different kind of clothes that don't belong to the so-called your imagination, then you feel a little strange, that's all, yeah? The main point is that you are happy. In this story, huh? The, uh, the disciple of the Master, or the followers, or maybe just the believers, they didn't say disciples here, actually. 
as they say, vi- visiting seekers. Ah, so they were new. Huh? Visiting seekers mean the one who come and try to see if the master is okay, if the teaching is good enough. You know, seekers are seekers. Yeah? Sometimes they come and sometimes they just go. So maybe because of that, they don't know anything about the teaching of the master yet. Yeah, Therefore, the master have thought that if those ancient master, yeah, have opinion <laughs> about this, they would say, "Oh, these are just demons. How can you teach demons?" <laughs> Some people who call themselves seekers, you know, they belong to this and that and this uh, group of religion, and they came with full of preconceived ideas about what the master should look like, uh, what a master should wear, how the master should behave. Uh, how the master should speak, and how much, how much the master should eat <laughs> per day. <laughs> like in some tradition, you have to eat only once a day, twice a day. You eat before noon, or you eat afternoon only, or you don't eat at all, or you eat only in the evening. You know all kind of rules, regulation that has nothing to do with the actual enlightenment and spiritual level of consciousness. Uh, by now, you would have known, right? Yeah, okay. But don't say, Master, say that and go out, eat all day long and eat a lot. <laughs> it's okay, you eat moderately, yeah? yeah? Eat when you're hungry, when you can, that's the best. Huh? And eat moderately. And don't wait until you're starving, you know, keep waiting. So, oh, Master say we should not eat too much, so keep waiting, waiting until you collapse. <laughs> and then eat a lot, and then maybe you die of, of, of overeating. Yeah. Everything moderate is the best, because the truth is so obvious, yeah? But how come? How come many people don't understand? You see what I mean? So obvious. It's like my hand. That's why the master of the other story I told you, that he tell the disciple to smell the rose and describe it. And they all say all kind of nonsense. Yeah, Mr. Mark. And whoever say, it's a rose, <laughs> can stay and learn with him. It's just a parable, yeah? But it's also uh, really point to a truth, no? That sometimes our mind is so complicated that we miss the point that we miss the point. That's the problem, eh? We miss the point. <sighs> and we uh, do things complicated way, we think in a complicated way, we talk in a complicated way, and we complicate our world a lot, complicated each other, yeah? Huh. To say uh, that the ancient master thought of these people as demons, it seems a very uh, strong word, you know? But actually, I cannot find any better word for it. How else would they be able to nail Jesus on the cross? Eh? How else would they be able to uh, try to assassinate the Buddha many times? How else would they be able to to harass, uh, you know, Prophet Muhammad and his followers uh, when they were still alive? And many. You know, similar, not as bad, but also harassing the true seeker, the true practitioners in our time also, because people misunderstand a lot, and they have so many ideas about how the true should be, what the master should be, and oh, so many, no end of this expectation. So it is correct that you say the expectation is different, yeah, and also a low level is also correct. Another culture, yeah, that's probably also, yes. Yes, as I told you already, if you met a master, maybe he's enlightened, and he's completely naked standing in front of you. Maybe you would be a little taken aback, no? Or maybe you really want to seek the truth, but it's too much truth in front of you. <laughs> too much truth at one time, you know. So, <laughs> it's a difficult. And the master just behaved the way a master behaved, you know, whatever he or she likes, we, because they're natural, you know? They're simple. They don't even think complicated. If I wear like this, what would people think? 
if I do like this, what would people think? Most of the time they don't. Yeah? They became as like a child, very simple, natural. They do what they do and finished. Yeah? I remember a story about San Francis, the one who, who took his trousers and gave it to the poor. One day, he is famous for being very loving and kind and, and always giving. But what can a monk give, you know, at least whatever he has? No? So one day he has nothing. And a poor guy uh, standing on the street have no clothes to wear, yeah, or very started clothes and cold. So he took off his clothes and gave it to, give it to that guy, and and walk back home in the natural way. And everybody just called him so much. Why did you do that? It's very indecent, huh? You you are completely naked and walking on the street and go back to our monastery like this. It's indecent. It's uh, offensive. And he was thinking, is this really o- offensive? <laughs> is this indecent? He was really completely unaware of the so-called indecency or the offensiveness of his, uh, you know, natural unclothed body. Yeah. Such is the state of some master, you know? They do what they do, they just don't think so much like that. Yeah? They don't mean anything to offend anybody. They just live one moment, you know, each moment the way they do it, yeah? According to the will of heaven, according to whatever has to happen, it happens, that's it, yeah. But uh, because we are complicated human (laughs) brain, we've been taught differently. We've been exposed to so many different customs and expectations and rules and regulations. Then when we see something different from our culture, are different from our expectation, we will repose it, you know, we uh, reveal it, you know, like uh, reject it, or even uh, condemn it. So therefore, the Master say like that. And it's not just about the appearance of the Master, also the teaching, also, you see? Because we learn too much from the so-called um, teaching, you know, and we fix on one sentence or one page, and we don't see the whole thing even, yeah? We don't see the whole thing. And even we read the whole scripture, sometimes we don't understand, yeah? How many people understand the Bible, yeah? When inside it says that, thou shall not eat meat, thou shall not kill, shall not drink wine, and not, not even be among the wine drinker and the meat eater. The Buddha said, whoever eat meat, from now on, they are not my disciples. Even so strongly like that, still how many people understand that, even practicing it. And then somebody else do understand, do want to understand, and do practice it. They look different. Hmm? How come you're not like me? It's not possible, <laughs> you know? And they put uh, even fish in Jesus' mouth, yeah. Now they found the ancient uh, writing. It even say he didn't even uh, give fish. He gave bread, yeah. And then in other in other uh, places, you also see he say he broke bread, you know. So that should have been that his tradition always broke the bread, and then shared it among the people, just like we do here sometimes. Yeah, I broke a piece of chocolate or something and give to all of you. Yeah, and we don't just break bread. Yeah, we break chocolate. <laughs> we break cakes. <laughs> we break cookies. Yeah, it's just a symbolic of sharing our love and whatever we have together. No, yeah. So, but in the ancient time, maybe they don't have chocolate. Mm. They don't have uh, cookies. <laughs> Not handy all right. the time. So now we all understood, eh? Huh? We understand each other. Why the ancient master uh, would think of uh, some of the seekers as demons because of their attitude, you know? They came sometimes with an aggressiveness. They call themselves seekers, but they came already full of preconceived ideas, yeah? And then want to go there just to attack the Master and his teaching, or her teaching. Look here, you know, I read in the Bible, it's like this. I read in the uh, Bhagavad Gita, it's like that. I read in the uh, Surah Ganma, it's like that. They miss all the points that they should read. They just get one sentence, which they don't understand anyway. 
or one page or one paragraph which they don't ever understand and throw it on the master and the or the believers or the teaching of the master. Yeah. And that is not too bad already. But they come to the extreme that to kill the master even, like in the case of Jesus or other sick gurus or Prophet Muhammad, they want to kill them, and his followers, for example, like that. And many more in the history of humankind that uh, human just, you know, harassed, prosecuted, and killed the master. Yeah, sometimes, oftentimes. Uh, these days we are really lucky, huh? Maybe. <laughs> but there are many other ways to, you know, to make the master trouble. Killing is not the worst, really. It's just the collective karma of the low consciousness. And that's why the Master, knowing all the risk and the danger, still coming down here from the glorious state of their oneness with God, to come here to be one with humankind, to be what they are, to do what they do, and in order to teach them, to lead them back to their original great self. Yeah. For that, many masters have sacrificed their, not just their physical lives, their spiritual state. Yeah? Because once they come down here, they also became low. It's not like they're born and they realize immediately that they are master. Maybe they did when they were young, you know, when they were first born. But after a while, like everyone else, everything cover, cover, cover. The more grow up, the more cover. Yeah? That's, that is the law of this physical universe. About the ancient master, because here he said that you wouldn't want to ask anything about the ancient master if you have seen them. Could be true, eh? Yeah. Many masters, they, they don't look the way they expect, huh? Mm. Even if they come here now, you know? Many people wouldn't recognize them. Yeah, many times they already asked many questions, you know. They expect a Jesus <laughs> to come down or uh, whatever. The Bodhisattva look like this, like that. Yeah. Mostly the Master behave just naturally, you know, appropriately. It just, just some people <laughs> want the Master to look in the frame, you know, the way they, they like a painted picture, always like this. <laughs> Like robot, you know. Good boy, good, good. <laughs> I had a conversation with a friend of his. Yeah. He said, like, um, I was talking about Jesus, the, the people were very discriminating because of how he looks and Yes. They didn't accept the master because of how he was looking. Yes. And, and he was criticizing these people of that time. Yes. And I said, but you are doing the same, because yeah. you accept Jesus, you accept the Master to look like Jesus now. Ah, okay. And when, when she is not looking like Jesus, you don't understand that Jesus is big and you yeah. don't appreciate them. Ah, uh, yeah. You see? <laughs> you are doing the same. Yes, doing the same. Same at the time of Jesus, 2,000 years ago. Nothing, uh, nothing changed, yes. Ah, uh, my goodness, huh? Did you? Did any of you feel like you are Jesus or something when you were in Jerusalem? Did you feel any of that influence? Huh? Some people went there and they feel like they are Jesus. Did you? Did any of you feel like that there? You did. Oh, he is very near, but okay, that's different. Nobody else. I was really under that influence, yeah. I felt definitely I, I was Jesus. <laughs> I was so happy. <laughs> I'm coming home, you know. I didn't like the last part, you know, the crucifixion part, but I liked the part that I was Jesus. I felt very good, very confident, yeah. They say many people go there and have that kind of feeling. I definitely did. Yeah, I can tell you that really they make you feel like that, make you feel like you are Jesus. Not just feel like, I am, you know, 
I have been, I was Jesus, feel like that. It's definite, you know, it's not just a feeling. Watch it, huh? If you haven't felt yet, maybe you should go back there and uh, check it out again. <laughs> maybe you were too busy to feel. I was busy too. How come that? It just came over me, you know? Like I came home. Mm. Like I was truly Jesus. There's no doubt at that moment. You know what I mean? Not like, okay, I'm feeling it. <laughs> I just feel like I relieve again, you know? Okay. C'est un honneur de vous avoir parmi nous aujourd'hui dans Entre Maîtres et Disciples. À suivre, salé ou ne pas salé, et c'est dans le mode de vie saint. Nous vous souhaitons la plus grande sagesse et inspiration tout au long de votre voyage dans cette vie. We are honored to have you with us today on Between Master and Disciple. Coming up next is to salt or not to salt, on healthy living. We wish you great wisdom and insight as you journey through life.